So I think without further ado, I would love to just kind of jump right in with an exercise. And I know we have Linda on the call. Linda was gracious enough to have me here today and also volunteer. So Linda, thanks again for being a volunteer for me today. Sure. So I think what we're going to work on together and everybody of course can do this with us and we'll have a chance to do it all together once Linda and I have demonstrated it for everybody on the call. And I wanna talk about breathing. Breathing is one of the best ways to improve your voice and vocal capabilities on a very tactical level. You really don't have to have any other type of expertise in order to learn how to have better breathing technique and really utilize your body. The breath is really something that's going to fuel the fire, which is your voice. So Linda, what I want us to do together is actually teach you how to breathe from your diaphragm and you're going to feel what that's like. So what I want you to do is you can take one hand. So take your right hand, put that on your belly and your belly is basically where you may have gained, you know, the COVID-15 as I like to call it, uh, really where your belly button is. And the other hand is gonna go on your chest. So the top of your finger, maybe you'll have one or two fingers touching your, your collarbone and the rest of it is going to be just about here above the bust line for the ladies. And what we're doing here is, I want you to have these two hands in place for a reason. The hand on your belly is going to allow you to feel the diaphragm working. You're not actually putting your hand on the diaphragm because from an anatomical perspective, the diaphragm sits like this right under your rib cage. And so it's really difficult to actually feel that moving from an external perspective. It's way easier to feel the air moving in and out of your body from actually having your hand on your belly. So again, anatomically, your belly's not actually breathing. It is your lungs working with your rib cage and your diaphragm to get that nice deep breath in and out. But this way, one hand goes here, you're checking to make sure you don't have too much movement in your chest, and you have the one hand on your belly to make sure that you're getting a lot of movement in and out of that area of your body. A lot of us are breathing super shallow, Linda, in here. So what you wanna make sure is you're getting that air nice and deep. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice together. What I want you to do is you're gonna breathe in through your nose. Now that's the best way to do this because you're gonna get a lot of nice oxygen into your blood by breathing in through the nose versus the mouth. It's so gonna have you take a nice deep breath as deep as you can go into your belly. Then you're gonna hold it for a moment and then just watch my lips. And as I start to exhale, exhale with me. And we're going to exhale slowly through pursed lips like this. And that reasoning is to allow you to actually feel the breath control in your body and the breath slowly leaving the belly and your diaphragm rising up, pushing that air out. So again, this is all about really connecting to your breathing and your body on an anatomical level to understand how you can actually control it. So let's go ahead, you've got your hands placed. Go ahead and breathe in through your nose with me. You can exhale longer than I can. That's great. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's very normal to everybody. Linda has a great point. It's super normal if you've never done this before to not be able to exhale for that long because you don't have as much air in the body to extend such a long exhale. So that's totally okay. That's something that you can build over time with practice. So again, let's try that one more time. See if you can actually have a longer exhale this time. I bet you can. So try it once more again, make sure that hand on your belly is moving outward as you're getting all of that air in. So again, one more time, you can go ahead and breathe in with me. All right, how did that, that feel? It worked, I was able to do it for longer. <laughs> awesome, very cool. It's one of those things, honestly, Linda, that your body can adapt very quickly to doing this because you are supposed to be using your diaphragm, but a lot of us just don't really do it in our day-to-day -day lives. We've been socialized out of doing it because most people breathe from in here. Uh, breathing from your diaphragm is something that 
musicians who play things like the saxophone do, a lot of singers do it. So it's something we're all capable of doing. It just takes some practice. And you already saw that within what was that one minute of practice, you were able to already see some improvement. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing I wanna show everyone before we all practice again together, and Linda, you can try this with me, is when you're breathing in through just your chest, your voice is actually going to be higher and it's going to have a little bit less texture to it. You're gonna have a little less gravitas because again, you have less air to kind of fuel your fire. So I'm gonna show you if I breathe in really sharp into my chest, my voice is going to sound super different than when I'm using my nice diaphragm voice. So I'm going to show you first before you try it. So again, first everyone, I'm taking a super sharp breath in and then next I'll be taking a nice deep breath in and you're gonna hear how different my voice sounds. Hi, I'm Melanie. Hi, I'm Melanie. Super wow. different. Right? Yeah, they're both my voice and they're both authentically me. I like to joke that that chest voice comes out after I've had three margaritas, but <laughs> you don't necessarily want to have that voice when you're in a professional setting, when you want to sound more convincing, more powerful, more in charge. So Linda, give that a try. Take a sharp breath in like that and then say your name. And then right after, nice deep breath in. Hi, I'm Linda Dravik. A deep okay. breath in. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Linda Dravik. <laughs> I heard a little bit of a difference. What I want you to do yeah. this time is when you breathe in deeply on the exhale, say your name. So breathe in, Linda. And on that exhale, say your name. And you'll get a nice rounder sound and a deeper sound. So try that again for me, please. Okay. Linda Drabeck. Mm -hmm. It definitely was a little bit deeper. I yep. liked that. And I think what you can do too is, and this is something actually for everybody, this is a nice thing you can do to create a nice first impression by using your voice. When you say your name, don't rush it. Linda Drabeck. Linda Drabeck. Right? Totally different. Yep. So try saying your name again very fast, Linda Drabeck, but then give it a nice... Almost, almost allow yourself to elongate the word slightly, Dravik. So try that again. I'd like to hear you first say your name fast and then, and then excuse me, fast and then a little more slowly. Linda Dravik. And then Linda Dravik. Hmm. There's a little bit more power to it. And you can make it a little less staccato too. Staccato for everybody on the call is when you have short punctuated sounds, Linda Dravik. Mm -hmm. Linda Dravik you can have a little more melody to it and a little more flow. So try that once more instead of Linda Drabeck. Mm -hmm. Linda Drabeck. Linda Drabeck. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And that, yeah. that, helps, that helps some people, you don't have a common last name, that's helpful, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. It's a great first impression, right? Because not only does it allow people to actually really understand your name, but you're giving yourself a little more space in the conversation to be like, mm -hmm. Linda Drabeck is here. All right, guys, <laughs> listen up. And so it's a great way, you know, there's a lot of founders I know in this call. If you're trying to talk to someone, give them your elevator pitch. I wouldn't say, hi, I'm Melanie Espelant. It's nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Melanie Espelant. I've got a great idea I want to tell you about. So you're giving it a little bit more room. So I think that that's, I think that that's fantastic. And I see how somebody in the chat actually said, how does that work for longer names? Really what you can do is just give yourself space to say your name. So Espelond, so my name has like multiple syllables, Melanie Espelond, it's six syllables. So again, I'm just giving it a little bit more space and a little bit more time. You're really just slowing down your speech a little bit. So instead of Melanie Espelond, it's Melanie Espelond. Or you could even put more of an emphasis on your last name if that's what is a little bit more challenging or longer than your first name. I could say Melanie Espeland. So you can also change it in that way as well. So the key thing again is this is all about creating a good first impression and allowing people to literally and figuratively hear your name and really know that you're there. So I hope that that answers the question and please feel free to keep these questions coming. Linda, this has been fantastic. I already heard a difference in how you were introducing yourself and how you used your breath. I do see someone also said, Corey asked us, deep breath has us moving our tummy in and out or tummy still and chest in and out. Great question, Corey. 
So everybody, let's all practice this together. Thank you, Linda. I really appreciate your help with this. Sure. And now I'm going to ask everybody on the call to go ahead and practice that deep breathing. So Corey asked again about where your hands are, what's actually moving. You want, you're going to have some movement on your chest, which is one of the reasons why I want you to have a hand here as well as on your belly. It's really to gauge where most of the movement is happening, everybody. So you want to make sure that your hand is moving in and out that's on your belly. You don't just want there to be movement here. There will be some movement on your hand on your chest, but you don't want all the movement to be here. So this hand here is really a double check for you to say, okay, do I only have movement in my chest or do I also have movement in the belly, which means your diaphragm is engaged. So Corey, I hope that helps to answer your question. Let's all practice it once more together. Again, everybody, this hand, you will feel some movement, but the important thing is that hand on your belly, make sure that you're getting movement in and out of there. So go ahead, breathe in everyone through your nose, get in as much air into there as possible. Consider thinking about the air actually moving into your belly. Go ahead and breathe in with me and breathe out with me. All right. And Melanie, can, can I just yeah. jump in to ask if, if of course. That, taking a breath like that before a shorter sentence like that makes sense, but say you're giving a pitch and you're speaking for several minutes, how does that mm -hmm. work with, and I, I'm sorry if I'm jumping ahead, but how would that work with taking those deep diaphragm breaths? Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> Great question. So of course you can't literally before every single sentence say, give me a moment, <laughs> take a nice deep breath, right? So unfortunately we can't do that every time we need to speak. What the point here is, is that longer exercise that we just did, it's really about learning about your body and gaining that awareness first. Because if you don't have awareness of how your body is working or how to breathe properly, there's no way you'll ever be able to control it, right? So it's first building that awareness and practicing. As you practice over time, you'll just become more aware of yourself and whether or not you're breathing using your diaphragm or just using your chest. And over time, you'll just be able to say, okay, where am I at? Maybe I need to you know, reset myself and take a nice deep breath in. Or potentially in the middle of the meeting, if you're catching yourself not really getting enough deep breath, you can take a nice pause, say, grab a sip of water, and then go back into it. So that is a nice way to very graciously take a nice breath if you need to and reset yourself in the middle of a meeting or on a call. Um, and always everyone, always have water next to you. So, so, so important. You need to keep this hydrated. It's kind of the same idea as if you're a runner and you do a marathon, you're always gonna be stretching your calves. You're going to be doing Epsom salt baths. You wanna make sure you're taking care of these muscles and your instrument. So always have water around. So does that help to answer your question, Linda? It's really about practice over time. It does, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. So I think, let's see, I don't know if anyone else has questions on the, I think I heard that one. Okay, I'm not sure if anyone else has questions on the breathing, we can always circle back to it absolutely once we get to the Q&A. So I hope everyone found that helpful. Please make sure that you are practicing. At home. And it's a great thing for you to do, even when you're just watching Netflix and relaxing. And then you can kind of catch yourself during the day. Huh, how am I breathing? So Linda, thank you so much. Small clap for Linda. Thank you for your time. Thank you.